No helicopters have been procured for me to go to golf course. Thank you. I never said he wasn't a great politician. I'm just saying he's a golf course. me to you. I had you play out there today. Uh, well, I found the conditions challenging. Mostly, because there's no grass on the golf course. But there never has been. I'm thinking about the swag bag, and I have high hopes for the swag bag. When you got three crevices on the green, your course is trash. What is happening, folks? Welcome back to the Beltway Golfer Podcast. This is episode 81. I'm your host, Alex Dixon. On today's show, we've got one of the quartet that makes up, can I say legendary? The legendary sports junkies. They've been on the uh, the radio here in the D.C. market doing, doing sports radio since the mid-90s for 30 years. I've been listening for literally decades, kind of from the beginning. I, I, I don't have as much of a commute as I, as I once did, so I, I don't get a chance to listen to them as much as I used to. But I've been listening to these guys literally since I was a teenager. And uh, these guys have interviewed literally everybody in sports and, and quite a few people in entertainment. They've been on five days a week for almost 30 years. It's a remarkable run. If you're new to the area and you're not familiar with with sports junkies, these guys started as childhood friends in PG County and got started on cable access and just made an improbable run and kind of their irreverent humor and some of their language, you know, really grew their fan base over the years. And it's just been a remarkable run. So these guys are in their 50s now, still going strong. You can hear them five days a week uh, on the in mornings on 106.7 The Fan. But I've been a fan of these guys for for a, lo- for a long time. They're just simply legends in uh, in sports media in this area at this point. And all of them, to some degree, are golfers. You've got Jason Bishop. You got Eric Bickle. You got JP Flame and. Uh, John Allville. They all got, they've all got nicknames and they're all, they're all golfers to some degree. Jason talks about it in, in our conversation. If I didn't say that, our our show today is with Jason Bishop, who's known on the, uh, on the show. He's had nicknames, everything from Lurch to uh, King of Ashburn, Lurch Papa. But he, he, over the years, he's, he's always seemed to be the one that really has loved golf. And is always talking about golf rounds and really talking about, you know, what's going on in the PGA Tour. The other guys as, as well, but always seemingly to a little bit of a lesser extent. So when I when I thought about having one of them on, I really wanted to reach out to to Jason because, at least to me anyway, he's always seemed to be the one that has just had a genuine love of the game of golf. So it was really exciting to chat with him. I've met, met him once before, but never really had a conversation with him. So to sit down and kind of pick his brain and, and we did a little bit of a master's preview. We talked gambling. He hosted his own uh, gambling podcast for a few years outside of the radio show, but a lot of fun to chat with Jason. Anyway, this episode is brought to you. We got a sponsor, Pinned Golf, P-I-N-N-E-D Golf. You can find them at pinnedgolf.com. They are the makers of a variety of beautiful, Range finders and encore speakers that come in a variety of colors, but most importantly are high quality and do not break the bank. You can head over to pingolf.com, enter code BELTWAY at checkout and get yourself 15% off. And in doing so, you're also supporting Beltway Golfer and this podcast. Also give them a follow on social media at pinned golf. Again, that discount code is BELTWAY, B-E-L-T-W-A-Y, pingolf.com. Before we get to the conversation with uh, Jason, I don't say it enough, but it, but sometimes I don't realize how much it really helps. If you want another way to another way to support this podcast is leave us a rating, subscribe to us on on YouTube, or if you're listening on uh, just audio, whatever platform, iTunes, Spotify, whatever you're on, leave us a rating. It helps out a lot. Kind of gives us more exposure. I think oftentimes I haven't realized that enough. This podcast is coming out on on Masters Week, so it's exciting. Um, a lot of exciting storylines. Uh, Scotty Scheffler, the heavy betting favorite. Local golfer Denny McCarthy, former podcast guest, making his first appearance at the Masters. The, the, the still have the whole live PGA Tour dynamic. Can Rory you know, get over the hump and, and complete his career Grand Slam? Can't wait. 
you know, it's every, obviously everybody's favorite week in golf. So it was cool to sit down with Jason Bishop from the Junkies and talk a little masters. Hope you enjoy it. Let's get to it. Here it is. Episode 81 of the Beltway Golfer podcast with Jason Bishop of the Sports Junkies. Enjoy. All right. We're here with Jason Bishop of, are you guys still called the Sports Junkies or is it just the Junkies? I mean, technically, yeah, we, we are the sports junkies, but I don't know. We've been the junkies, the sports junkies, the sports clowns, the idiots for, I don't know. You call us whatever you want, but yeah, just call us the junks. Got it. So I have to admit, uh, my, I started listening to you guys. I mean, I go way back. My first job out of high school, and I didn't go straight to college. This is like 96. Was that winter? I was, I, del I was a delivery guy for takeout taxi. Wow. Which was which was such a shitty job. I can't even tell you. Oh, I bet um, it was. But I remember one of the things I remember was like during that period. I only worked there for I don't know four or five months. Was a guy turned me on. And he's like, you got to listen to these guys, the sports junkies, and it was Sunday nights on mm -hmm. on WJFK. Which I guess I didn't even realize until recently looking it up that that was that was basically the year you guys started, right? About nineteen ninety six. Yeah, I mean we're working on shit. We're on, we're working on almost thirty years. So yeah, we were doing weekends weekend night and then we started doing weekdays weekday nights uh, or weeknights and then and we got the opportunity to go morning and uh shit we were probably that was probably 2003 shit jp would probably know better but early 2000s but yeah but overall we're working on almost 30 years we're cranking year 2028 20, i think uh it's an impressive run and i mean no sign no, no sign of letting up, right? I mean, you guys are, you guys have every, every intention of going into the future. No, no as end in sight. As, as far as we can. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. We're, we're in a four year contract. We're just, we're in year two of a four year contract. So I don't know the future, honestly. Yeah, I mean, right. it kind of depends on what the company wants to do and what all the other guys want to do. And I will say, getting up at 4 a.m. every day and driving into the city from where I live, it ain't fun, right? So, I can imagine. Uh, I ain't going to do it forever, put it that way, yeah. but it's my job now. And I got to get my younger girl, uh, daughter through college. She's a junior down at Virginia tech. So as for now, that, that's what we're doing. And we'll, we'll talk in 2026. We'll see what the future holds. It sounds good. Uh, so you're, uh, so you've been, uh, deemed on the show many, many times as the, as the King of Ashburn, you're, you're still, you still call Ashburn home. Ashburn's my home, man. Yeah. I've been here since, well, originally moved to Sterling which is next town over. Where do you live? I live in Arlington. Yeah. So been in Ashburn in this house for 18 years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think been the only time, only time you, I've had any kind of face to face interaction with you was, was literally making the turn at 1757. Gosh, probably 12 years ago. Wow. I mean, it was a, uh, may, maybe even long. I'm just guessing it was a long time ago. Probably the last time I played 1757. <laughs> well, I've been there a long time. <laughs> This was this but, was yeah. back when it, it certainly was back when it was public as it's, as it's, yeah. now it's now it's private. So that, well, that's kind of where I was going. So you live in Ashburn. Uh, this is a golf podcast, so we're gonna, we're going to try to do mostly golf here. Mm -hmm. Where where you know where do you play most of your rounds of golf? Well, I'm a member at Evergreen. Have okay, you ever been out to Evergreen. I, I, I have not, I have a standing invite. There's actually there's a, another gentleman I had on the podcast. Maybe you know he's the GM at Golfdom, Matt Trenton. Yeah, I know Matt. Yeah, so he's a member out there. Yeah, and he he's he's kind of uh, invited me out. I haven't taken him up on it yet, but I was oh, I'm planning I'm planning to this year. You'd love it, especially in the fall, man. It's awesome because it's right there in the mountains, and and uh, the fall foliage is unbeatable. But yeah, I've been out there for a couple of years. It's in Haymarket. It's it's probably twenty twenty five minutes away. I probably should get out there more often, but it's it's an awesome spot. As far as the places that I really like to play, well. Just in Ashburn, I play, you know, I got buddies that are either members or, or GMs at some of these local clubs at Belmont and, uh, River Creek, both in the Ashburn area. And they're, you know, five minutes down the road. Yeah. But, you know, and I got buddies who are members over at Creighton Farm that you would love Creighton if you haven't played Creighton yet. Haven't played Creighton Farms yet. It's been, been a lot. Had, uh, Erica Larkin, the, the, the instructor over yeah. there. She's, she's yeah. been on the show, but I, I've yet to actually. I, I, I stuck the drone up in the air and, 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 and got some footage of it, but I oh, have not, a, not actually teed it up. You would, I mean, the homes are unbelievable, but and what I love about Creighton is you go out there and I don't know how many members they are, they have, but 
we I've never had to wait on a hole. I've never had someone, you know, hitting into me. It's been it's just wide open. Right. Yeah. So now I haven't played on the weekends. I'm sure the weekends are a little different. I usually play the weekdays, but it's great. But you know, all the you know, I got a buddy who's a member at RTJ, I can't beat that. I got a buddy who's a member. My buddy Sam Weaver and um, Scott McBrien, who are buddies over at uh, Congressional, and uh, I try and just play all of them. You know, I try and get out and play Trump. Sure. I love Trump too. But Scott McBrien, I, the old the old Maryland quarterback. Scott McBrien, yeah, played at yeah, Brown, played at sure. West Virginia, Maryland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a good friend of mine and really good golfer too. And he and Sam Weaver, who I play with, they're the members over at Congo. And uh, Sam Weaver's an awesome. He's like a plus two. And, McBrien's probably a four and I just try and keep up with these guys, man. They're just, they just hit the ball long and straight, but look, just to answer your first question, member at Evergreen, but I try and play everywhere, man. Cause I just sure. like playing all these different courses. I, I couldn't imagine playing the same course every single day. That's just not me. I agree. And so I try and get out. I try and get out and play, I don't know, 10, 12, 15 courses a year. But I'm having a shoulder issue right now. I haven't played since early November because I've got this shoulder. I've got some tendon issues in my right shoulder. So I've been going to physical therapy twice a week. But i got to get my swing together soon because I've got a trip to Pebble Beach planned in late July. Oh, wow. So i got to be yeah. able to go out there and, and, and warm up and have some practice rounds before we leave in July. So hopefully by my PT saying I should be fine by end of April. So I've probably got another month. Was that uh, a golf-related injury or something different? I mean, it's just age getting, yeah. yeah. I mean, I've swung the golf club a billion times. I've shot a basketball a billion times. I'm almost 54. It's probably a combination of everything. But uh, when did, when going back, when did you, so you, you were, you were a basketball guy. You played for the legendary Morgan Wooten at the math of played at university right. of Richmond for the spiders D one b- basketball. When did you pick up golf? What, I used to play with my grandfather back in Sligo Creek, which is right off go. the beltway right there in Tacoma park. And he would take me out there and I would hack around shit. I was probably, I was probably 1977, 78 when I was, you know, I wasn't even 10. But then I didn't really start playing. Once I got to high school, I never played in high school. And then I moved down to, you know, I was going to, after Rich, after, I was only at Richmond for one year. Then I was going to Salisbury State. And I was working at Ocean City during the summers. Mm-hmm. I was working at the Carousel Hotel as a bellman. Okay. And another buddy of mine down there, John Rudo, was the uh, was a head pro down there. And I started playing probably when I was 22, 21, 22, 23. So that's when I started to really pick it up seriously. I, I didn't play throughout high school, and I didn't play for most of college. And then I started playing again and really started get, getting hooked and addicted when I was living down at the beach. And I would just roll over to his golf course. I can't remember the golf course he worked at. It's not there anymore. It's not Ocean City Golf Club, but it was very close to that. So that's when I really started to pick it up. And and it just kind of took off from there. And I got addicted to it, man. I really did. And I Were was you still, still playing pl- basketball. That, that was, was my question, yeah. Yeah, I was still playing. I was, you know, playing with my buddies and playing pickup. And, uh, but I, I just, I really fell in love with golf and I still love it. I'm addicted to it. I just, I'm frustrated now because my, my shoulder's not letting me swing the club right now. But hopefully the ne- next month I'll be okay. Yeah. Did you play, did you continue to play basketball at Salisbury? No, I decided, no, I didn't because practices were at 6 Mm a.m. It was a really good D3 program. They were probably at one point ranked number one in the country in D3. They, uh, they had a kid named Andre Foreman who was from Ocean City. He went to Stephen Decatur High School and he could have played anywhere in the country. He could have played at Duke, Maryland, Kansas, North Carolina, anywhere, but he decided to stay close to home and played at, uh, at Salisbury. And they had another kid named Damian Ross, who was awesome. He was awesome. He was an all American. So I could have played with those guys, but I decided, you know what, I'm going to start getting into sports radio. And I started working for the, the campus radio station. And then I just started living my college life, you know, okay. I, I did, couldn't, couldn't see myself getting up at 6am practicing at six, six to eight, and then going to class for, you know, three, four hours. That just wasn't me. So I stopped. So you had some experience. I'm not sure I ever knew that. So you had some kind of radio experience before the junkies kind of started. You, you, you were doing some campus stuff. Is that why, I mean, you, you were friends with EB at the math. Is that why, you know? Yeah. 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 I knew all those guys, but yeah, yeah. EB and I went to high school together, but yes, yeah, that's, that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. I started working for the campus radio station. I was also DJing. Uh, I had a, a 
I don't know, Tuesday or Wednesday afternoon, maybe two or three hour uh, show on the campus radio station, just playing music and with another friend of mine. Uh, we also started doing a, uh, a Monday night, you know, call in show. Now, when I say call in, you could only hear it on campus. So it's not like people around Salisbury or Ocean City could call in. But <clears throat> that's when I started getting into it. And I was doing some play by play for the basketball team and I was doing some color for the football team. Shit, that was 1992, 93. And, but then I got out of it because there, I didn't really have any Washington radio connections. And I started just working some odd jobs. And then these guys, <laughs> they called me up and said, hey, we're going to do something on Bowie Cable Access TV. You want to join? And I said, fuck yeah, let's go. <laughs> and that's when it kind of all took off because that's when the Washington Times, uh, Dick Heller was the, the writer for the, he's no longer with us, but he wrote an article about us. And that's when WJFK actually read the article, saw the article, saw four local guys doing a radio show. Let's give them a shot on the weekends. They gave us a tryout and it took off from there. It just, we got lucky. It would snowball from yeah. there. Interesting. So I got to ask, so you were, this is a, this is a funny anecdote that I only just realized recently, but I'm sure you're well aware and you've probably talked about it on your show, but because it's related to Richmond basketball. So I was actually at the game. So Richmond was the first 15 seed to ever beat the two seed, as obviously you know, but making sure that the listeners out there are aware. And I was in seventh grade, and I back then the game was at Cole Fieldhouse. Were you at that game? Were you on the team at that point? No. I was a red shirt. Yeah. You were a red shirt. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, so I, that, was, that was unbelievable. It was unbelievable. So, so back, back then to get tickets, again, I'm in, I'm in middle school, and you had to write you had to like submit something like send a, uh, send a, I mean, this is obviously pre-internet. I think I had to like right. mail, I like put my name and address on a three by five card, mail it in somewhere. It was a lottery just to have the right to buy tickets to the first and second round at Cole Field. Isn't that crazy? So it's, it's super crazy. And so yeah. I won. And so once I won, I was able to convince my dad, like, Hey, I won, we got to buy tickets. And, you know, he took me out of class and we went and it was one of the most, uh, it, it was for the longest time, maybe still is like the, the coolest uh, sporting event I ever saw in person because at the time yeah, a 15 still, seed getting a two is just impossible. Yeah, I still talk to some of those guys who are on that team. Chris Fleming was on that team. Chris Fleming was a transfer from UConn, and he uh, he's still a good friend of mine. He's actually assistant coach for the Chicago Bulls now. Okay. And Curtis Blair was on that team. Curtis Blair was, you know, he was all CAA for two or three years. He was sure. really good. Yeah. But and, the guy uh, I was going to ask you about is is and the reason I was bringing this up was is Kenny Wood. And and his son, who I, I'm not sure a lot of people maybe know that connection. Yep, Kenny Wood. Yeah, Kenny Wood was at one time. He's from New York City. He was at one time. He was the all-time leading public school scorer in New York City history. Now I'm sure that's been broken. Now it's public school, and a lot of the great sure. players obviously went to private school in New York. But yeah, his son James Wood is the top. If he's not the top prospect, he's one of the top two prospects for the Nats right now. And he's playing for the AAA squad in Rochester, New York. But he, he'll be – I have a vibe he'll be called up sooner than later. Absolutely. Um, but I still talk to Kenny, and I, you know, I talk to – like I said, I talk to Curtis. Curtis Curtis Blair is an NBA ref now. Really? Okay. Yeah. And there was a couple other kids on that team that were really good. But, yeah, uh, Jim Shields was my roommate. He was a big six foot eleven kid from Erie, Pennsylvania. Played overseas for a while after he graduated, but I still, even though I wasn't there for four years, I still stayed connected to a lot of guys, a lot of good dudes that came through that program. Yeah, uh, I I just did not know that Kenny Wood, James Wood connection until like a, literally a couple of weeks ago. I actually just went down. I did like a kind of a family. I got an eight year old now who's who's into golf, and we went down to spring training just a couple of weeks ago for a spring break, and went to uh, Nat Spring Training Park. And literally fifteen minutes from walking in, we got James Woods' autograph, and so he was like super pumped. Uh, yeah. But James Woods is a stud. Hit a hit a home run the game we the, the game we oh, went to, yeah. and he's gonna be he's gonna be really good, you know, barring any injuries. But he's gonna be really good because he's six six and he can run. You know, he's got long strides, so he doesn't look like he's running fast, but he is fast. Mm -hmm. He's got great power, and uh, he's going to be a right fielder for the Nats for a long time. Hopefully, let's hopefully you know he, he comes up quick and stays healthy and has an immediate impact. Yeah, and I, I, and we got we got to talk golf here, but there I I did get I, I somehow I came across you know the le the legendary DC sports writer used to be with City Paper Forever Dave McKenna. Yeah. Oh yeah. So he wrote an article. He's he's had some website now that I was not familiar with, but it popped up on my feed. But he wrote an article about. 
James Woods and how the head baseball coach at St. John's instituted this pay for play kind of off season uh, uh, training program uh, and travel team while he was at St. John's and mm -hmm. not just James Woods, but there was a couple other stud players that are like playing in the minors now that basically mm -hmm. said, no, we're not going to do it. And, and St. John's, the head coach and the AD just said, all right, well, bye. And they right. left, and James Wood, uh, the, the Wood family, and took James Woods. I think they, he went down to IMG, maybe? IMG, yeah, yeah. down in Florida. But yeah. meanwhile, St. John's has been flourishing. They're like a top-10 baseball team. So, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it kind of worked out for everybody. But, but it's, it's an shit, insane man. story. It, things happen for a reason, right? That's the way yeah. I look at it. But, you know, James Wood had committed to Mississippi State to, to play in, in the SEC. Okay. And then he said, well, I was talking to his dad about the draft. And he says, yeah, if we go first round, we can't give up that kind of money. He went second round. He went early second round. But, you know, I don't know what percentage of guys that are drafted in the second round in, in the amateur draft end up going to college. But the money was, you know, it was it was pretty good, you know, and they yeah. decided to take the money, get right into the minor league system. And he's been escalating, you know, pretty quickly. He's only 20 years old, I think, maybe 21. Yeah, but he's young, big, big kid. So, so back to golf a little bit. So it's interesting, you know, going back, I mean, like you said, you guys have been on the air 30 years or so now for a long time. It seemed like you were the only golfer of the junkies and was that fair or, or at least you were the, <laughs> I mean, maybe the other guys were golfing a little bit. Definitely not. I think JP is more of a new golfer. Um, yeah, he's a new golfer. Eric, Eric started playing way before I did. Oh, he did. Okay. Yeah. But he was, but then he stopped playing. For a while and now he's 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 hooked up again so shit, it seemed like he went seemed like he went 10 or 12 or 15 years without playing he just kind of lost it and wasn't interested anymore and then recently over the last i want to say year and a half or two years he got he started getting back into it and now he's a member at norbeck right country club he and cakes are members at norbeck now cakes doesn't play he just goes out and plays tennis and hangs out at the pool but yeah i was i was I was probably the only guy that was playing consistently, like religiously, consistently for probably the first, you know, first 10 to 12 years of the show. Maybe you were the only J guy talking J about it. And JP would play every now and then, but like, like now yeah. he's addicted to it. So as we get yeah. older and it's sure. harder to do all these other th activities, it seems like golf is at the forefront. Because of that, I mean, for, for so long, you guys have been the premier sports show in, in this area for so, so long. So, I mean, you guys... And sound, I mean, I'm sure the answer is yes, but I mean, I'm sure you guys have gotten P, had PGA pros, you know, connections. At, at, how often do those emails come in? Hey, Jason, if you want to come out and play? Just hit, yeah, yeah just <laughs> let us know. I mean, it happens a lot. It does. That's one reason why I'm out at Evergreen. <laughs> to be honest with you, uh, Chris Hall is out there. He's a good, great dude. Tommy Thompson, great guys. Um, but. Yeah, I mean, that happened a lot. We got invitations to play anywhere. Or if, if it wasn't from uh, Andy, Andy Bond was at Trump for a while. And now yeah. he worked, moved over River to Creek. River Bend. River Bend. You know Andy? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah, good dude. Great guy. So he would invite me out to Trump. So I would play out there. And now he's at River Bend in Great Falls. And I go over there and play. That was another one I, I forgot to mention. But yeah, I mean, that happened a lot. And, you know, and also got good friends who were members at some of these courses, too. So we, I've been very lucky. Yeah. Very lucky that I was able to, to, to meet some really, really good guys in the golf business and the golf industry. Um, uh, and it's just, it's just one of those things where, you know, I probably, I don't know if my, my golfing would have lasted very long if I didn't have some of these connections, to be honest with you. Sure. Because, you know, if I was just working in a sales job and, you know, it'd be very expensive to join these clubs, right. And go out and play and have got guests out, guest fees. So I don't know. I don't know if I would do it, but very fortunate. And I, I'm, and I tell these guys, thank you all the time, man. They've hooked me up. But you guys have also had, you know, some, I mean, you guys have had just countless guests and uh, who's who, not just in the sports world, but kind of, kind of all over. But when you, I mean, your regulars, even, even to this day, Feinstein joins, is he, does he come in every week? Every Friday. Yep. Every Friday. Steve Sands, is he a weekly or how often does he come? No, we just get him usually for... You know, if there's a big story in golf, but we always get him during the majors. So we'll have him next week for the Masters. We'll have him on on Wednesday. I'm trying to get Denny McCarthy. Denny, Denny McCarthy and I talk, you know, we're not great friends. We don't hang out together because he's obviously, he lives in Florida. He's on the tour, but we talk a lot on text and he's actually playing in the Masters this year. 
First time. Because he finished in the he finished in the top 50 in a FedEx last year. So he's playing in, he plays all the signature events and he's playing in the Masters. He's never played in the Masters. And uh, he's really pumped. He's playing in the Valero this week down in Texas. Uh, he shot 68 today, actually. I know this is recorded, <laughs> but he shot 68 today, first round of the Valero. But yeah. And so, yeah, St- Sands, he's a great dude. And we'll get him on, you know, four or five times a year. We've had Faraday in studio to talk about the Live Tour. Um, Denny McCarthy, obviously, we have him a bunch of times. And um, we try and get we try and get as many big big names in the industry. We've had Nance on before. Yeah. So it kind of just depends on what's going on in the, in the world of golf. Obviously, if there's a Tiger story off the course, you know, we're going to try and get some reaction from somebody, uh, whether it's Sands or Nance or one of these other guys. But, you know, we try and get Golf Channel guys. Sure. You know, so in the years, we, we try I mean, and talk as much golf as possible. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, you guys absolutely do. In the years, certainly when when Tiger was hosting his, his tournament here up at at, at Congo in the AT and T National, then Quicken it was Quicken Loans it was still his too, right? Did he did he ever swing by the studio? You guys ever have him on during those years? We, no, he was too big time to, for us to uh, get him in <laughs> studio. But he he had a he had a, a press conference out at Congressional. I can't remember what year it was. It was before all the nonsense started happening, but um, Mm -hmm. he had a press conference and he was taking questions from the media. Eric and I went out there and we were too scared to actually ask him questions in front of the media. So we waited until he came down and then he was taking one-on-one questions. So we went and stood, you know, up to, went to, hey, Tiger, can we get a quick question? He said, two minutes. He goes, two minutes. Uh, His PR guy, two minutes. And uh, so Eric and I asked him, I think, one or two questions each. But we were standing, you know, right next to each other. So that's the only time we've ever had Tiger on is when Eric and I went out there and asked him. We re- it was recorded. It was probably a five-minute conversation. We played it, you know, obviously on the show. But that was the only time we've ever had Tiger on. He's impossible. We've had Greg Norman on a bunch. Yeah. Did you have Did you have Greg Norman on when he when he kind of was just launching Live, mm-hmm. kind of selling it a bit? No, I don't think we had him on. Post live. In fact, I know we haven't, but we had him on a few times. I can't remember what, exactly what he was promoting, but he was really nice. He was, he was awesome. But then we had a live connection, which we've had some live golfers on since then. But sure. uh, we got to get Norman back on. He's he's really fun to talk to. Well, I mean, and Faraday now not only is he with Live, but he seems to be like the the, the face of Ocean City Golf. He, he signed a big deal. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the deal is, but he he seems to be heavily promoting Ocean City, Maryland. They've got a big uh, music concert in the fall, and then like yep. they have a big like tournament that I think he's the host of, and a bunch of the musicians kind of play with play in it. Oh, really? I, I oh, that's, think that's, that's the deal. Cool. Yeah, I didn't know that, but yeah, that concert series is huge. I mean, OAR Mark Robert is the lead singer from OAR. He he organized it, and he's also a good friend of the show. Yeah. But, I didn't know Faraday was involved in that. I have to ask Mark about that. I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty positive because he I mean he's now like on every every uh, commercial about Ocean, Ocean City golf tourism. It's all it's been David Faraday for the last two or three years. Yeah, well, I don't get those commercials out here in, in uh, Loudoun <laughs> County. Surprise, you get them in Arlington, <laughs> right? I don't I don't know where. I, maybe I'm seeing them on social media. I have no idea. I dig it. There's another. Uh, so I had a couple. Tell me about uh, Matt Valdez's game. I, I saw him at uh, at the at the Wells Fargo. I got I got uh, the, uh, the opportunity to play in the in the media day for the Wells uh, the uh, yeah the Wells Fargo at TPC Potomac last year, and I right. think I think it was maybe Drab Valdez, Cakes, and JP were out there, right? And I and I walked by and and Valdez was just hitting just bombs on on the driving range. Is he is he much of a player? Yeah, he's he's been shit. He's been playing seriously for he's. He, he's more serious about it than I ever was. I think he's down to a four. I could be wrong, but I think he's down to a four. My current index is like an 8.2, but I haven't played since November. There's no chance I could go out there and play like an 8.2 now. But, yeah, he's he's been playing a, a long time, and he's he's addicted to it. He's been getting uh, – he, he got personal uh, uh, personal training and personal coaching and, you know, swing lessons and all that stuff. And he's, he's got great great equipment, mostly courtesy of Golfdom. Uh, our, our man, Buddy, uh, is, is the owner of, of golf team. He's awesome. Yep. So, yeah, yeah, he's been playing a lot. He's addicted. How in in all years of playing, how low have you gotten your own handicap? I was down to a seven, 
you know, 7.2 or 3. That was, that was yeah. probably, that was pre-COVID. So, you know, 19, 18, 19. But my body just started to break down a little bit. And I've just kind of, you know, I've hung around that 7, 8, 9 range. Sure. So I'm still, you know, I'm still decent. You know, if I play really well, I'll shoot 80, 81. Uh, if I play average, I'm in the mid 80s. Play horrible, I'm in the low 90s. But I haven't broken 80 in a long time. I used to, I, I probably broke 80 20 or 30 times when I was in my early 40s. But I can't, there's no chance I could do it now. And mostly it's because my short game, I mean, it's all, it comes down to short game, right? And sure. there's always that one hole where you're around the green and, you know, you duff a chip or you, you know, you, you lose one in the water and then you're, you're putting for double bogey and you miss that, you're yeah. a triple. And those, those strokes will add up and there's always one or two holes that'll fuck you. Yeah. And, uh, that's always really frustrated me, but I, I I'm hard on myself too. Alex, I, I'm, I'm very hard on myself on the golf course. I don't, I don't have as much fun as I probably should because I, I, I know that drill. Yeah. I want to compete and I want to post a good score. Mm-hmm. Even if I lose a match, you know, if I'm playing a match with a buddy, if I'm losing a match, but I'm still posting a good score, that's what I want to do. I'd rather lose money, but play well <laughs> instead of play average or bad and win the money. So, right. but you know, as I get older, it's, I got to kind of, come to grips with that and and I haven't really been able to do that but yeah what's your, what I got down was to about 7.2 what's your what do you have like a go to you know I think every anybody that listens to the show know that knows that you like uh, to participate in the gambling arts uh what what is your get your 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 game of choice on the golf course uh we just usually play a, you know an ass all you know yeah. it's usually what we do or we'll play it you know we'll play a you know skins game side action skins game some of these other guys that I play with, they get crazy and they like to play some, I can't remember the name of it. You probably do, Alex, but where you play hole to hole and then you can, you can bet on the next guy's shot. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you can double yeah. the bet based on his I, next I, shot. I, I know what you're talking about. I don't know the name of it, but I, yeah, I, I don't know, I know the, the name game. of that. Um, I should know the name of that, but, but I, I can't get into that because then you're starting to talk about holes that are worth, you know, 50, 7,500 bucks. And, then I really start getting freaked out because if I know I'm I'm hitting a fucking 125 yard shot that's worth 100 bucks, I'm gonna shank that. I just can't do it. <laughs> I'd rather play a 20 dollar Nassau, and the worst that can happen is I lose 60 bucks, and yeah. I'm okay with that. Yeah, but no, I'm kind of saying it's some of the some of these games it gets you know you got to get a calculator out there or you got to get a, a notebook to keep track of them. I don't know some of these and guys. I, I got are... buddies that'll play. They love to play that shit. They love to play. <laughs> As for as much money as possible per hole, and I, that's just not the way I am. <laughs> what about so uh, we we talked about for for I mean you even had a podcast going for for a while called Picking Fatties, uh, where it wasn't just gambling on golf but gambling on all kinds of sports. Have you started to uh, not to get into a full scale Masters preview, but have you started to look at the lines a little bit? Yeah, I have. I usually just go week to week, but. Since we were doing the show, I knew you were going to ask about it. So I don't know how to feel about this particular Masters because a lot of the guys that are in the top 20, 15 or 20, in terms of the odds, aren't playing that well. So Scheffler's obviously balling out, right? Sure. He, he missed that eight-footer last week at Houston. And, you know, if that goes to a playoff, he probably wins that. And he's, that's three straight. That's unbelievable. But Rory's not playing well if you look at his numbers this year. Rom, obviously, Rom and Kepka are over and live. Spieth hasn't played that well. Zalatoris, he had a couple decent tournaments, but last week he was terrible. Hovland hasn't played that well. Shoffley's been okay. Justin Thomas has been okay. I mean, I, I, Cantley's been okay. So I, I don't know, outside of Scheffler, who I would really look at. I mean, apparently Joaquin Neiman's been playing really well over in the live. I don't pay attention to the live numbers as much. I uh, probably should, but I don't. But I know there's some guys over there that are playing well. And I don't know, maybe Neiman's someone to look at in the Masters, you know. But Scheffler right now is playing so so well, it's kind of hard to overlook him, even though he is the favorite. He's five to one. Yeah. That the one I the I the the app I use, they 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 sponsored this podcast for a little while and I got a buddy that works there. It's called Betway. But they got Scheffler at four to one. I just I don't remember a masters i mean i'm certainly back in, in in tiger's heyday yes but where there was this much of a gap between the favorite and the next couple 
because I mean, at least on Betway, you got oh. Scotty at four to one, and then McElroy, which is kind of surprising, is the next at ten to one. Yeah, you're right. That's a big gap. I don't know. I can't remember the last time there was that big of a gap between the favorite and the next guy. I'm kind of surprised. You know, if Ron was playing on the PJ Tour right now, I'm guessing he'd be. If he's not at four to one or five to one, he's probably pretty damn close, right? Sure. He should probably he should his number at thirteen to one is probably a great number. That might be somebody we should look at because he's obviously won there. I don't know how he's playing in over and live. I don't pay attention to the scores, but I'm sure he'll be dialed in at Augusta. So that might be someone to look at. And then Kepka always balls out there, you know? He's usually sure. you know, he, he only cares about <laughs> four tournaments a year. How many on on a mat on a, like how many bets will you put down? You don't have to give me dollar amounts, but how many different bets would you throw down like a Masters? Well, I'm in pools, so okay. I'm in four pools. So one's a head to head. Uh, another one is you pick three guys, and the other two you pick two. And then and the ones that you pick two, you pick one American, one international. So if I'm doing the math right, that's uh, three, five, six. So eight guys. All right, I'll have eight guys that I'll be rooting for. Now some of those guys might be the same players in those pools, but I'll uh, shit. I don't know. I'd, I'd probably, I, I usually don't bet on the winner. Although yeah. this year, Rom, I think is probably a good bet. I would, I would probably put 50 or 75 bucks on him at 13 to one. That'd be, that'd be a great bet. But I usually just do top five finishes or top 10 and then I'll do head to heads. Sure. So, and I'll usually take underdogs in those head to heads. You know, I, let's just say Hovland's playing against Cantlay. If Hovland's a mm -hmm. slight dog, I'll take him in a head to head. And I do, I do round by round. I, I usually don't do four day scores. I'll do round by round at that. So I'm, I'm, I'm all over the place, Alex. I mean, I don't know about you, but I, I, I do a bunch of different bets. Uh, I like it. What's, what's your, what's your betting app of choice? Well, I'm a fan duel guy cause I'm an endorser. Okay. So well, I, that's, they're a big client of ours. <laughs> so I'm usually on fan duel. Right on. What what are your thoughts, Justin? I mean, just people before I switch. I mean, I, do, are there any guys? Because I got a couple guys. I was looking at the odds. What are your thoughts on a, a first timer? Lud, Lud, I always botched the pronunciation. Ludwig Obear, twenty five to Ober. one. Um, Fir, yeah, first he's, time, he's a, right? Great. Player, a first, first. When was the last time? First time winner one? or first time player? Was it, one? I know Maybe. Fuzzy Zeller. I know Fuzzy Zeller did it. And for for so long, they're like, no one's done it since Fuzzy Zeller. I don't know. Just based on history, I would bet against. I wouldn't <laughs> bet on any of those guys. I mean, Obear's he's a really good player, but I mean, there's a lot of pressure. He's not. He's he he doesn't understand what he's going to be feeling when he's out there at Augusta, especially if he makes the cut and he's playing on Saturday. If he's playing in one of the top three or four groups, there's a lot of pressure out there for these guys. So I don't know. I mean, it's it's a great question. I think you got to look at some of these guys, but I would probably stick to the top, the big, the big names, because those are the guys that are used to the pressure. They know how to handle the shots. They know the strategies. They know what holes to take advantage of. And I, I think that it all comes down to, to experience those places. Yeah, for sure. I'm a big and fan. Then Tiger, of them. And then Tiger. 100 to 1. Tiger make the cut. That's another <laughs> bet I'll make. I was going to say, have, you, they, they, have they posted odds on that yet, have they? Have I haven't seen that, seen that yet, no. Uh, I'm a big fan of doing like a, like a like a Denny McCarthy, for instance, who's 125 to one, is take Denny or somebody in that range, and you're basically betting on him to be in the mix, and then not to give up hope on Denny or whoever else it is, but sell him early on Sunday or late on late on Saturday, and you Man, usually get a good payout. That would be awesome if Denny was in the mix. He can put his ass off. I'll tell you that. Absolutely. Um, and I just. I'm just waiting for Denny to, and he he was close last year to winning. He lost to Hovland in, you know, where did he lose? Where was that? I know. I, 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 I can't but yeah, I think he, right. But he's, he's, he's putted so well over the last three years. He's, he's really close. And maybe it's this week, but he's, I think he's going to, he's going to win sooner than later. But I would love to see Denny play great at, at, at the Masters. That would be awesome. I mean, you got to remember, and you know this, it's a small field, right? Sure. So there's only what 90 players, maybe 100 players. So if he can just make the cut, and you know who knows what's going to happen on the weekend, but just to see him in the mix would be awesome. What is your if you put your crystal ball or your your you know little your prognosticator hat on? What do you, how do you think this whole PGA Tour live thing shakes out? I don't know, man. They're pretty far apart, and I know that all these players are really starting to get frustrated. I don't know, to be honest with you. You know, there's so much money over there that. 
I, I can't, I can't imagine that more guys aren't going to jump. Now, Monahan went out there and got a $3 billion prize, right? And that was a huge get uh, to keep some of these guys here. So a billion and a half of that's going to the players. And then the other billion and a half, I don't know, that's going to purses and, you know, they'll spread that out. But the fact that they've got these signature series events, these eight series uh, signature events, of $20 million purses, which is basically guaranteed money for all these guys. And now they went out and got this $3 billion influx of money for for the guys. It's going to keep some, especially the big names here. But I feel like some of these players over the last two or three weeks are realizing, and I'm, I'm talking about the live guys, mm -hmm. are realizing that the, the PGA Tour fans, golf fans in general, really aren't paying attention to the live guys anymore. Yeah. Right? Because... Yeah. Just like I said, I don't pay attention. I'm a huge golf fan, but I don't pay attention to how they're doing in the tournaments. I don't even know what the schedule is. I know they're playing the Greenbrier this year, but I don't know where they're playing, you know, every other week or, you know, I guess they play twice a month, something like that. But, and I think that the, the golfers are starting to realize that fans don't care anymore. And yeah. that, that might affect the PGA Tour guys too. But at least the PGA Tour is televised, and we can watch them every week. I don't know when I could watch the guys on Live. I just, it's not on my radar. Yeah, no, it's so, not. I think you're 100 right. So I don't know. To answer your first question, I don't know what the future is, unless the PGA Tour says, "Okay, all right, we're good with it. All right, let's just merge. Some guys can play over there if it's a smaller tour schedule. You guys can play in all these big events here." But I don't think Monahan and Rory and Tiger, because those are the three big dogs, are going to mm. give up. So I don't see it ending anytime soon. I don't know about you. Do you think? Yeah, I, I, I don't have any better answer. Do you think Norman regrets the some of the format stuff, like the shotgun start and the three rounds versus four? The, you know, preventing them from getting OWGR. I also think to your point of saying like, it's like, cause I'm the same way. Like they're just kind of not on your radar, not just do you not know where they are on television and when they're televised, but I, I cut the cord. So sometimes, you know, whatever app I'm using, you know, Roku or YouTube TV just kind of pops up golf when it's right. relevant. So I don't necessarily need to find it, but when I do turn it on, it's like such a new product. It's hard to really follow. You know, and, and, yeah. and I think our brains are kind of just trained to like, you know, you know how a PGA Tour tournament works and anything else is kind of just feels exhibition-y. Does he regret it? I don't know. That's a good question because obviously that does affect the world ranking points system because, they, you know, they're not going to give points to guys who are playing three rounds. But he, he knew that that was going to be one of the attractions to getting guys to come over there, right? Yeah. I mean, the Brooks Kepkas of the world, they don't like playing, you know, 20, 20 to 22 to 24 events a year, playing four rounds and have to grind out to make the cut to make money. Yeah. So he, he, he knew that you get guaranteed money anytime you're going to play three days instead of four. And, you know, you could, they're team events, you know, guys like the team events, especially the guys who play in the Ryder Cup. So I don't know. It's a great question. I don't know if he regrets it or not. Uh, I'm sure he didn't re doesn't regret the fact that he got paid to represent live, <laughs> yeah. right? Uh, but I don't know. It's just it's frustrating because I want to see all those guys play over here. I don't have anything against live. Sure, I don't blame any of those guys for going over there and taking the money at all. But I do want to see those guys more than four times a year playing over yeah. here. Yeah. About switching gears, but back to gambling a little bit in the in the recent uh, weeks and even uh, more more recently with, with the whole Shohei Otani thing. Do you think, you know, what do you think about the? I mean, obviously you're 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 a gambler. We already talked about that. This whole shift in the United States where gambling is absolutely everywhere, and it seems like a, a massive scandal, whether it be Otani or some something else, is just a matter of time. You know, do you think? You, what do you think yeah, about it all? I, I, would <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what my question is, but <laughs> no, I think it's no, it's interesting because for the longest time. All of these professional sports leagues were anti-gambling. Yeah, they were they were tolerating fantasy. Mm -hmm. Okay, but you're right; they were anti-gambling, and now it makes the world go round. Right, and they're getting so much money from these gambling sites and, and the Otani thing. I mean, 
shit, that, that stuff with, I mean, Otani, just the fact that it went public, everyone thinks, oh, no, okay, so now professional athletes are doing, professional athletes have been betting on sports forever. Yeah. <laughs> Believe me, in a, in a legal way, you know, maybe they all have a bookie here and they go through another guy, a third party, but. Sure. But you're right. It's, um, it's a big deal. And shit, you know how much money was bet on the Super Bowl last year. It was crazy. Yeah. Crazy amounts of money on the Super Bowl. And Roger Goodell loves it. They fucking love it. Right. And they have all these sports betting apps that are sponsors and advertising. And it's, it's a big deal. I don't know how many states right now have legal sports betting apps. I'm guessing it's around 20 to 25, but eventually it's going to be every state. Yep. Mar Maryland has it, right? Maryland's Maryland probably. has it. Virginia, uh, Virginia has it online. Virginia has Mar it. Yeah. Maryland has it both. North Carolina just approved it. DC has North it. Carolina okay. just approved it. California, yeah. I think just approved it. Did that coming okay. out to California. But have you talked yeah, with like San I mean, have you talked with Sands or even Feinstein or anybody about because there I don't I mean I could be wrong there there what well, there was a golfer last year that they they suspended because there's some suspicious suspicion of gambling right did I I'm making from that up golf for last year I feel like there was it was it was a it was a smaller guy and it was not a household name I could be getting that yeah wrong, you might be but, right I'm, but my I'm question about right but now. about a golf is like you know you're not part of a team you're not part of a larger league. You know, you're kind of an independent contractor, but it'd also be so easy to do. I mean, you're talking about, you know, placing a bet on Tiger Woods if he makes the cut at the Masters. And I mean, obviously not the Masters and not Tiger Woods, but a smaller guy at a smaller tournament, if someone yeah. wants to, you know, put the fix in, all you got to do is not make the cut. Big payday. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe that's already happened. Though. We have no right, idea. Totally. Right? Absolutely. No, but you're right. And I've been gambling since I was in shit, probably early college, late high school, early college. So, and I was just going through bookies and now that it's so easy, you just log on your phone and place, you know, $5 money line parlay or same game parlay or whatever you want to do. And you can, you know, it's, it's crazy. And, and you can bet on everything. You can bet on every sport in golf. You can bet on, you know, first round leader. You can bet on certain holes. You can bet on over unders and on scores. You can bet on top five finishes, top 10 finishes, top 25 finishes. I mean, there's, there's so many different aspects to every sport. And like you said, man, it's, it makes the world go around now in sports and, and Shohei won't be the only guy that's involved in this. There'll be other big names you watch. For sure. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It, it'll be interesting to see if, you know, what the first state or there's a municipality or, or there's the first league that kind of starts to backtrack because nobody's really done it yet. But you, you would think if there was a big scandal like there was back in the 50s and, and stuff like that, that at some point it yeah. happen. Well, I mean, these I can't imagine these states are going to backtrack when they're getting a certain cut from <laughs> everything that's coming in. So much in. money. So much money. Right? So, yeah. I, you know, it would be hard to, to, to envision that. But you, you may be right. Yeah. A couple, couple of random questions before before uh, I, I let you go. Back back to D.C. golf. It sounds like you've, you've, pl you've played and play – Basically, you know, all the all, all the top clubs and courses that anybody uh, that would want to play, uh, you've played them. Is there any any still bucket list in the Mid-Atlantic that uh, you, you haven't gotten out to or you want to get out to? What haven't I played? Oh, I'm, I'm blanking. What's the what's the one right there in Montgomery County that's real private? Burning Tree? I've not played that. Nah, I can't say I have either. But, uh... <laughs> I've had opportunities. Well, I, I can't say – plural opportunities. I had one opportunity, but it just didn't work it out. But yeah, that's the one that I really need to play. Okay. Um, I've played all the other ones in the area and, yeah. and I love all those courses, but that's the one I have not played. And so that's probably the one. Have you, now this is obviously not DMV. Have you been to Pebble yet? I have not never been to Pebble. Uh, is this your first time going or have you? Is this no, this would be trip? my fourth. Okay. And my buddy, Carl, uh, my buddy Carl Seltnix, who he owns a company, a drywall company in Montgomery County called Capital Drywall, and he's okay. he's a good friend of mine, and he's got a lot of connections out there. So he's taking me out there every single year, and we're going out again in July. Oh, nice. You, my friend, you need to go play Pebble. That's got to be a bucket list thing. Absolutely, go play Pebble. It, is that your number one? Is that like your? Oh, that's my number one. Okay. Oh yeah, you won't believe it. If you ever get out there, you just won't believe that you know, when you're watching the Pebble Beach Pro-Am on tour and watching Jim Nance, 
those the video doesn't do it justice. When you're out there, you wouldn't believe how beautiful it is and how picturesque. It's just an incredible experience. Do you, you when you do. when you do that trip? Is that the only course you play, or are you playing some of the other ones right there? No, we play Spyglass and we okay. play Pebble and uh, we play Spanish Bay once or twice too. But it's usually a, a three day event, and we go Pebble twice and Spyglass, or we'll go uh, Pebble Spyglass Spanish Bay. But usually it's Pebble twice and Spyglass once. How and big Spyglass is, is, is great too? Is this a small group or a larger larger outing? Usually, first year we went out for, with four. And then we okay. expanded to eight. So this year we're going out with eight as well. Before your body tells you you can't play anymore, you need to get out to Pebble, my friend. <laughs> Absolutely. How do you do a lot of a lot of golf trips outside the DMV? Do you have like a regular crew that you'll do kind of bucket list kind of things? No, that's it. That's the big one. That's the big one. Every I mean, that's, year that's, it's Pebble. That's a good one. I'd, I'd love to get down to Florida and play some more. I'd love to get down to, to Kiowa and some of the great golf courses down in South Carolina. There's one course down in South Carolina that uh, Daniel Island Country Club, which is really, really nice. Got two courses there. They held the U.S. Amateurs there last year. Okay. That's also another one I want to play. But no, usually it's just Pebble. That's the only one I, outside of DMV that I go to. Yeah. Will you go out like this year, for instance, the, the Solheim Cup is, is out at RTJ or even yeah. the U.S. Mid-Am down in Richmond? Like, will you make the trek to, I mean, RTJ is close. I'll def I'm definitely going to go to the Solheim. Because I, I follow a lot of these. these I watch the LPGA all the time. And I, so I want to see some of these girls close up and hit these balls. It, that's going to be a great event. And I don't yeah. think it'll, it'll be very crowded, which will be great, especially yeah. on the first day. Maybe on Sunday it'll be crowded. But I'm going to try and get out there on that Friday. And I can't wait to see. Nellie Cordo is just a baller. Absolutely. I, mean, she, uh, I can't wait to, to watch some of these girls. So the one down in Richmond, you said, what's that? The that's the, that's the, U, the U.S. Mid-Am. And that, yeah, I think I it's, all, I think it's maybe two weeks, it's like two or three weeks before Solheim. It's also like yeah. August. September. I'll definitely get down to the, to the Solheim. Cause that's only, that's 30 minutes from the house. Uh, yeah, that's cool. Did, did you make it out to, uh, the KPMG at, at Congo? Is that last year? Last year? Two years yeah. Ago? Yeah. Uh, I did not, but the other guys did. Yeah. Gotcha. I did not. Very cool. Now the, the junkies that you guys have, did you get, you guys used to have like a golf tournament, but I think it was, maybe it was for your buddy that, that passed away. It was kind of a, a, a fundraiser. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was, uh, our buddy Craig who passed away in a car accident years ago. We, we did it for about 10 years, but it was just, and some of, some of my other buddies kind of were, were at the forefront of organizing it and getting sponsors and, and all the day-to-day -day activities that it takes. To, there's a lot of work that goes into putting on a, a charity golf tournament. So we did it for about 10 years. We raised a bunch of money uh, for the foundation and for his his wife. And we haven't done it in a while. Uh, yeah. Maybe it'll come back at some point, but I, I don't think so. That was the only charity event we did. Yeah. Well, very cool, man. Uh, I, I'll tell you what. It's been it's been a pleasure to, to chat with you and kind of just chat golf and and you know some small basketball stories and a little bit of gambling and because i've been listening to you guys for a long time you guys you know institutions and in, and in, in sports radio around here is a bit of an understatement enjoy the masters jason this has been you awesome too. pleasure pleasure to meet you treasure pleasure to chat with you and and have an awesome trip to uh to pebble beach cheers buddy thank you very much awesome thank you i don't have a good golf game but I don't really care. I'm a, I'm a regular dude living in D.C., and I want to know about D.C.-centric golf stuff. If you can tell me something that I don't already know, then that is great for me. I don't want the regular stuff. I want exciting stuff. I want different stuff. I want stuff I can't hear elsewhere. But I want it to be about D.C. golf.